Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboard and today we're taking a look at a keyboard from a brand I've yet to see or review, the Boy IK87. Um, from what I understand it's a two mode uh, wireless Bluetooth and wired um, TKL. So Boy did send out this keyboard to me for my honest review and that's what you'll get, my objective opinion of what this keyboard is like. So let's go ahead and open her up and see what we've got. All right, so opening the box, we see that we have a decorative, fancy, um, kind of like a thick wax sheet with uh, silver lettering that actually has texture. Oh, I guess that's nice. Uh, we have your USB-C to USB-A cable. It's a, uh, a basic cable. It is, honestly, it's a bit thinner than what I'm used to on USB cables that come with keyboards, but I'm sure that it'll work just fine. We have four extra yellow switches. Let's see if these are gator on. As well as a an extra space bar here in case you want to switch out the color. So oh okay. This one has some writing on it. But, so the keycaps seem to be decently thick enough. Let's see about these switches. So yes, these are gator on yellows. And they come stock. They are not lewd. But it's always nice. I gotta say, when manufacturers include extra switches on a hot swap keyboard, that's a nice thing. You, know, you never know when you could accidentally break the pin off of one, you know, while lubing it and moving it. A thousand different things could happen. To have those spare switches can be a godsend for a lot of people. And out of curiosity, since we already got the space bar here, let's go see what kind of thickness we've got. Okay, 1.4 on the sides. 1.4, okay. Yeah, it's 1.4. All right. So this one's 1.4, but that is that's about half a millimeter thicker than a lot of um, sock keyboards. So I've got to say that's a pretty good accomplishment. Right there. They include both the normal two-sided keycap and key switch puller, but they also included a switch puller only with a handle. So that's interesting, right? That one's got their brand on it. This one does not. Every accessory that comes with it seems to be nicely packaged up. We have a uh, quick start guide, and it does say that they have a one year warranty service, exception for human damage factors. So then they provide an email address for direct. Now, this is obviously nice. Anything happens to our keyboard that you know wasn't caused by us spilling a soda on it or dropping it on the floor then it's nice to know that there's some back up there somebody's got your back so it uh, shows the different uh, modes here but one thing that stands out to me right away is there does not appear to be a um, key combination to switch Mac and Windows mode so we'll have to see if this has it all right and here we are the IK87 from Boy. Now, feeling it, it's actually quite um, substantial out of the box. It's a, it's a little heavier than I expected it to be. On the back, we see that we have somewhat of a recessed port, uh, USB port, but I don't think that's going to be a problem, uh, as well as channels, so you can go either out the left or right side if the, if the middle doesn't work good for you. And we have an on and off switch right here, so go ahead and turn it on. And what do we got? All right. It looks like we've got some pretty decent RGBs on here. Um, yep, it's, in its, it's trying to pair those. These three are the uh, devices, the storage devices, or the connection devices through Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth. So usually I see three mode. If it has wire, wireless capabilities and it comes with a 2.4 in Bluetooth, I personally never really use uh, the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. I prefer Bluetooth if I'm going to go wired, um, primarily because all of my workstations are 5.0 or above, and if the keyboard is 5.0 or above, I'm going to have a really good connection. But even with older ones, I still I feel that I get a better connection. But I think I do live in a quite heavily saturated 2.4 gigahertz area. Let's see. Let's take a look underneath these keycaps and see what we've got. 
Now, one thing I say, I, I will say that because this uses some uh, novelties, whenever a manufacturer does this, now this is fine. Novelties are fine, and I like that you know there's novelties included in stock keyboards. But what if I don't want to use novelties? I should have the option to switch out the function, switch out the super key, switch out the escape key, switch out the enter key, switch out the backspatch, 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 backspace key, and have normal keys. And I know this, I mean, that this specific set, but the, um, the matcha clone set, this, uh, what is it? Set? I just realized it looks like that is an XDA profile. It's completely flat going across. We're almost completely flat. Or I guess it's going at the angle of the keyboard. And the keycaps do have a bit of a, a uh, curve to them. So it looks like F XDA with a bit of a um, of a scoop inside of the keycap. But the RGB does seem to be pretty good. It is a north facing LED. All right. So if we look into the channel here, what do we have? So, yep, there's nothing above the PCB, but we do have, there's no sheet, I was gonna say, but we do have a nice thick layer of what appears to be probably a poron uh, between the plate and the PCB. And though there does not seem to be any case foam to speak of. So, hmm. Case, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I like plate PCB foam, but dampening, in my opinion, in most situations with plastic keyboards, you want to put that at the bottom of the case. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the wireless mode off and plug it in real quick and see what we've got. This, and that's a tilt, that shouldn't be a cut. So, and that's one thing I, I've got to say. Um, I mean, okay, great, I can switch out the space bar. And while we're doing this, let's go ahead and take a look at these stabilizers and see what we've got. So we've got plate-mounted stabilizers. We've got, uh, oh, we can see that the uh, plate foam seems to have shifted. Hopefully it's not going into the stabilizer. But, all right, the stabilizers are your basic plate mount, though they are quite well attached. And they do appear to be lubricated, which is a very good sign. Go ahead and put the, uh, just the plain one on here. Yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> it, it, not everyone touch types. And like I said, I try to take as many perspectives into consideration as possible. I don't use Mac. And I'm pretty sure this does not have a, a Mac mode. Um, I do want to investigate to see if it has software because if it doesn't have software, mm. all right. So let's go ahead and plug it in. And the keys don't sound half bad, to be honest with you. Um, now, this keyboard does retail for SB8999, though it does go on sale from Boy Direct, I believe, uh, from time to time. And it does include a 3500 hour milliamp hour battery. All right, just a couple things off the bat. Now, we saw that this light comes on, we're in Bluetooth mode. And then this light comes on when we have caps lock. But that middle light, so seeing as we have very limited instructions, it's like, where, what is that light? But what is that standalone? I don't know. Now, also, where's the software? What if I do, I mean, granted, this is a TKL, and it has all of the keys, minus the numpad, but say I want to use cap or my caps lock as a control or as a function or as whatever. Um, what if I want to um, do per key RGB? Well, obviously that's not even an option here. So, and I don't see, how do we cycle through single lights? None of the normal ones for cycling through the lights seem to work. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Boyi IK87 Matcha Edition. 
This is a two mode TKL pre-built with Bluetooth, unknown version. It does state that it's Mac compatible, but I did not find a key combination uh, to, to make the switch uh, that would flip the two keys over. It does come with a 4000 milliamp hour battery and although the advertising on the site states that it has pro software, after about an hour and a half of searching I was unable to find anything that worked. The MSRP for this keyboard is $85.99. It comes weighing in at 1,030 grams, primarily due to its heavy steel plate. The chin of this keyboard sits 22 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 31.5 millimeters, giving you a default typing angle of 6 degrees. The first pair of feet will raise the back up to 36.5 millimeters and giving you an 8 degree typing angle. The third and final set of feet raise the back height to 46 millimeters and almost doubling your typing angle to 14 degrees. So today we took a look at the Boy IK87, which um, though it's advertised as having pro software, I was unable to find any software after an hour and a half searching, where I was able to find that function and delete changes the single color backgrounds because it's not even in the quick start guide that they include. I also went to their website and they have downloads, but only for the 61% um, wired and Bluetooth keyboards. Though they sell this one on the website, there is no link to download any software and they don't even include all the shortcuts. I still wasn't able to find if there's actually a Mac mode as they also advertise that it, it has a Mac mode. Well, I don't know what the key combination to get into the Mac mode is. Now this keyboard, like I said, retails for $86. It is a um, hot swap north facing LED with decent keycaps and Gatoron yellows but they're not glued. A steel plate, foam between the plate and the PCB, but no foam below in the case. So honestly, uh, though, and they actually state that it has per key RGB. Now, I know some keyboards have manual programming mode where you can put it in programming mode, flip through the lights, then go through the rest of the keyboard but there's no instructions and there is no software I, honestly I'm confused when manufacturers send me out a keyboard if for some reason their advertising isn't clear across different sales platforms or sales channels and even if it is I usually have them and they, they usually include without me having to ask a little breakdown of the features that might make this keyboard stand out above the rest or why it's, you know, why they feel it's worth the price that they're putting it out there for. Um, my guesstimates, this keyboard in bulk at the most was $20. Um, so, uh, you know, buying at least 500,000 units and, you know, obviously they're branded for them. Although it, come in, it came in a white box and all it really has to brand it is that it's a plain sticker. It's a, it, it, it looks, it makes it look cheap. I don't know if it's a designer or what, but uh, so it's, it's a white label board that they threw in a, an extremely heavy plate. This thing weighs over a kilo, 1,080 grams. The plate is thick. Um, obviously I can't, I didn't take it apart so I couldn't measure it with my caliper, but the uh, stabilizers, I, I, they don't move and it was I was gonna pop one out but I I would need to put a little bit more work into it now I do plan to come back to this at some point in the future um, and either lube well I don't lube switches anymore I don't have to and then if they're scratchy I break them in, in my break it machine I'm honestly at a loss as to why they did not include more information about this keyboard when they when they were sending it to me um, so if it had a link for software, if it had some case dampening, 
and it had either some different switches like some Pro, uh, Gatoron Pros, or some Lube yellows. Um, I would say okay, maybe seventy nine or sixty nine seventy dollars if they actually included like a PC plate. Well, then I'd say yes, this is this is a good value. Now, granted, that's me. Um, I don't use two point four. The Fecker does have two point four. A lot of people prefer two point four because they might be working with computers that don't have Bluetooth adapters and they like to be able to just plug in and go without having to go through the pairing process. I get that. So them removing that feature despite the MCU being capable um, and also cutting the batteries in half instead of two four million two four thousand milliamp hour batteries. There's only one. It's um it's co cost cutting and I see the Fecker IK87 which has more features and it does, I mean, in the exploded view anyway from one of the ads I saw on AliExpress, it looks to have some sort of case damping as well uh, as 2.4 and 8,000 milliamp hour with two 4K batteries or 4,000 milliamp hour batteries. Um, now, it's, it was $56, but it's bare bone. Yes, but you can get, if you're buying through AliExpress and you if you know how to shop on there, you could get a set of 90 Gatoron yellows for probably anywhere between $15 to $18. Um, and you could get a Matcha XDA keycap set for, I would say at the most, like 21 bucks. So add those 40 bucks into that 56 bucks. We're talking 96 bucks. Not much more than this. And you've got double the battery. You've got another connection method, and you actually have software that works, because I did. I tried the Fecker software, and it said it wasn't recognized. Um, I tried several different software that would link to different forum Reddit posts, and there was one that actually came, you know, and the software um, came up and said the firmware is too old. Uh, please update before running. And I'm like, okay, there's a firmware update file. But I ran the firmware update file, and it could not detect the device. I tried everything. I tried reset mode with escape, with space bar, with both of them held in while plugging it in and out. Um, you know, unplugging it, replug it. Nope. It did not recognize it. It did not exist as far as it was concerned. And that Fecker software were actually for a Fecker IK84 because I was reading the thread and they said, oh, this one works for the 87 Puma. Firmwares don't usually go across sibling models. <clears throat> So I'm gonna go ahead today. Um, I think I've ranted enough. I, like I said, I, I, I can only be honest about it. And I, it's not the first time that I've received something from a brand to review. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, obviously I don't want them telling me what to say, but I would like them to at least, you know, kind of give me a pitch. Not necessarily sell me on it, but give me reasons why you know their their value proposition that they're putting out in front of customers is worth what they're asking for you know and providing me some bullet points of feature which like i said practically all manufacturers do or they send me a link to their their web page and their web page is literally you know it would if printed would be like 10 pages because it has a lot of information without even having the shortcut keys. It's just a marketing, but it has, it covers everything. Yeah, I might have to read through some fluff. That's okay, I can pick out uh, the, the technicals, but, or they have a chart with the technicals down at the bottom. So, <sighs> saying that it has pro software and not having a link to it anywhere, um, not even on your official site, boykeyboard.com, why? Why? I just don't get it. And <clears throat> like I said, I, I um, I'm afraid that this keyboard's gonna be, it's not gonna sound the greatest. It's not gonna sound the worst. I've definitely heard keyboards that sound way worse than this stock. Um, but I'm thinking that these really thick uh, 1.4 millimeter um, caps uh, and is making a difference or is making a difference in that. But I really think that had they put better switches in there and some dampening underneath, 
that would have made a big difference. Change this out to a PC place. Honestly, I think this is a $120 kit. But, you know, fully built, good switches, good keycaps. I mean, these keycaps are, are decent. Except for the fact that I don't like that I don't get to select the novelties. Maybe I want to use novelties. Maybe I don't. And if I don't, like if, say if I'm working in a space that sometimes people are going to come to the keyboard and use it. They're going to be like, hey, what the hell? Where's the enter key? That's normally enter, but because you need to have the option. If you're if you're going to sell a keyboard with keycaps and use novelties as stock, you're going to have to include the extra keys. Um, it just doesn't do just to include a space bar. That's not enough. That's just not enough. So, um, again, just to roll it back up and, and go over just the things that I think could have been done much better. Different switches or lubed gate on yellows. Dampening below the PC plate. Keys to replace the novelty keys. Um, I would would have made the back legs not as high. I mean, this goes way up high. But yeah, it has a, a really, I mean, with the, the final legs, or the bigger legs, I should say, it raises up the back to 46 millimeters. Um, that's 14 degree typing angle. Now, granted, I've seen 15 degree typing angles, but usually the highest is roughly 13. So, and a different plate, perhaps. But, I mean, at least give me Mac mode or show me how to do it. Include the function delete to cycle through the colors and give me Windows and Mac mode because you say that you're a Mac compatible and you say you have software, obviously you don't have Mac software. You didn't delude that, but you didn't clearly say that. So I hope more than anything else that I can help these manufacturers you know, do those things right so that they deliver the products that people are looking for. Now, if you don't agree with some, you know, whatever I have to say, please you know, let me know in the comments below. I'm always happy to discuss. Um, but that's just, I mean, $85, $86 uh, from Amazon before taxes and shipping if you don't have Prime. I I just, I, I can't, I can't make an argument for it. Can you? So I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test of uh, this Boy IK87 TKL 2 mode uh, with matcha keycaps and stock Gatoron yellow switches. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.